Hello and welcome to another week of What's for Dinner. To get dinner number one started, we are having spaghetti, but not just any spaghetti. My husband suggested that we have the Italian sausage, you know, like the links cut up into slices and then added to the spaghetti sauce. So I am getting them sliced up into smaller bite-sized pieces and browning them in the skillet with some oil. While that sausage is cooking, I'm slicing this Italian bread in half. I'm making Pioneer Woman's jalapeno olive bread. I can't remember if that's what it's called or not, but anyway, I will link the recipe in the description box. I'm using some seriously sharp cheddar cheese that I shredded. And when the sausage is done cooking and it's all nice and brown, I just have a couple slices of, of onion that were in my refrigerator that I'm using my scissors and cutting up. I then added about a pound or maybe just a little less than a pound of ground beef into the center of the skillet to get that browned up as well. Jumping back over to the bread recipe, I'm adding some mayo to the shredded cheese. And then I use some garlic and some Parmesan cheese. The recipe did not call for Parmesan cheese, it called for pepper jack cheese, but I didn't have any, so I thought I would add Parmesan cheese. Now, just letting you know, you don't have to do that. It would have been fine with just the one type of cheese. I then chopped up some olives and I'm adding that to this cheese mixture as well. And then also some jalapenos and I'm taking my scissors and chopping them up into finer pieces. And I'm just gonna mix that all together. And the recipe that I used, um, she said that she felt like there is like one time that there can be too much cheese and it would be this recipe right here. And I think I have to agree with her. I could have cut this back by half and it would have been more than enough for this amount of bread. Anyway, I am toasting my bread pieces in my air fryer and checking on the meat. I just scooped out the little bit of a, a grease that was in the pan with my spoon and just discarded that. And then I added two jars of the tomato basil pasta sauce from Walmart. Now this was a very sweet and rich tasting spaghetti. It was very good, but just letting you know, it had a sweet taste to it. And when my bread was all nice and toasty, I just took it out and then covered it with the olive and jalapeno cheese mixture. And then I'm gonna pop it right back into the air fryer until it is all nice and melty. And just mere minutes later, we had some ooey gooey, olivey, jalapeno-y, <laughs> cheesy bread. And this is so good, like dangerously good. Now this was a very, very rich meal. It's not one you would wanna make all the time. Well, at least I wouldn't, but we enjoyed it. It was so delicious. If you're like me and you want comfort food all year long, then dinner number two uh, really checks off that box. It is Bubble and Squeak, which is a fun name for cabbage and sausage and potatoes. 
I like to make this meal all year long because it is super quick and comforting. It only takes a few minutes to throw it together in very little prep time. And it's made in one pan, which I really like, as you know. And because it's only on the stovetop for a few minutes, you aren't heating your entire house up during the hot summer months either. So I just browned up my smoked sausage and when it was all cooked, I just removed it into a bowl and then added my sliced red potatoes into the same pan and seasoned them up with some garlic powder, salt and pepper. I like to use one pan for everything, as you know, just to save on the dishes. No dishwasher here, as you know, so we like to work smarter and not harder. I'm going to be using this bag of tricolor coleslaw mix in place of um, cabbage because my store did not have any cabbages when I went. I added about a quarter cup of water into this pan with the potatoes just to get a little steam action going and to help them along getting cooked all the way through. As you can see, it's a very small amount and that water will cook out. And so when my potatoes were about halfway cooked, then I added my bag of coleslaw. I do like using the bags of coleslaw because then you get those little slices of carrots and red cabbage as well. One thing I forgot to add was onion, which we add onion to pretty much everything, but we didn't miss it and we um, actually thought about it way after we had eaten dinner. And so I am just using the remainder of that jar of jalapenos and I'm chopping them up in the pan with my scissors just to get those used up and plus the little um, bits of spicy are really nice as well. My husband actually added crushed red pepper flakes to his as well. We do tend to like our food on the spicy side here in our house. I added another quarter cup of water and these little bits of water cook right out. You do not have to worry about it becoming too soupy unless you add too much. I'm cooking on a high enough heat that the liquid will just evaporate or cook into these veggies. And once everything is starting to soften up and get nice and tender, then I added my sausage back into the pan and put the lid on just to finish out those last few minutes of cook time. And here is our bubble and squeak. I just put everything all in one bowl. We had some canned corn on the side and this was a very comforting and quick, easy and delicious meal to put together. It's one of our favorites. For dinner number three, my husband went to a local Mexican restaurant and bought some of their seasoned steak meat. And they just made some easy steak tacos. Here I am just heating up what was left after I got out of work that night. I worked pretty late. And then I'm just warming up some tortillas in my foreman grill because it was sitting on the counter. And I just kept it really simple and added some diced tomatoes to my steak. We had lots of other things to top it with, but this is just what I was feeling on this night. I was just kind of wanting to eat and get to bed. Our fourth dinner was just a whatever night. It was just Cameron and I at home on this night and I decided to have SpaghettiOs because yeah, I'm a grown woman and I can do what I want and SpaghettiOs was what I wanted to have for dinner. So no cooking and um, Bill was at work that night and so was Dawson. So it was just one of those weeks where we were all kind of coming and going and missing each other and doing our own thing for dinner. dinner number five I am just doing a really quick and simple 
crock pot dinner I'm making this pork roast if you remember I bought this a couple weeks ago and portioned it out into smaller sections and stuck them each in my freezer this is not something that we typically make in our house it's not our favorite cut of meat we don't really eat a lot of pork unless it's bacon or sausage but here I am just seasoning with the steak and pork um, seasoning and some barbecue sauce and then just letting it go in the crock pot while I'm at work. Bill and the kids were home on this day so they were in charge of keeping an eye on it until I returned. And so when I came home from work it was a little dried out but it was fine. I just shredded up that pork with two forks and got it rehydrated with some vegetable broth and then just broke it up, mixed it back in and Kind of got that sauce looking a little bit better it was like on the verge of burning but you know <clears throat> everybody was outside working in the yard on that day and i guess it was just up on high or something like that i don't know my crock pot has a mind of its own so we really have to watch it but it turned out fine it was actually really good we just had some tater tots along with our pulled pork sandwiches and i decided to put mayo on mine just because i was a little worried that it was going to be dry which it wasn't and then um i just happened to find out by putting the mayo on there that it's actually really good with mayo on your pulled pork sandwich so i don't know didn't need that extra bit of fat but anyway um, I'm just gonna make my sandwich up and we're gonna call it a night for this dinner and so I'm just gonna um, put a bunch of <clears throat> excuse me I'm gonna put some banana peppers on my plate because I just love them <laughs> on my sandwiches and so I had some leftover olives, just decided to use those up as well. And I had set out some pickles for everybody. So I had some of those with mine too. I guess I had a whole relish tray going on on my plate, but that is all um, summer food to me. So barbecue pork, all kinds of relishes and some tater tots and of course you know me the ketchup is my favorite so that was our dinner on this night yum yum the crock pot has got to be the easiest way to do barbecue And we are just moving on through our week and we did a lot of scrambling around with this garden. It was such a rush till the end to get everything put in. We kind of felt like we were losing time, but my husband was very persistent and he was out there just working even though he was so tired and um, managed to get all of the rest of our plants in. And on this day he was getting our green beans planted. Um, I know somebody asked about shuck beans before because I mentioned them and shuck beans is basically when you take your green beans and you string them together with thread and then hang them in your window until they dry out. And then we also were pretty busy with baseball games for grandkids and that kind of thing. So dinner was very simple because, you know, we forgot about dinner. So we ended up just doing some sandwiches and, you know, groceries haven't been happening either. So we were just doing what we could with what we had. And on this day, we just had some eggs and I just fried them up and decided to do just a simple egg sandwich you know it was late in the evening when we got home and we just wanted to get fed and get to bed and um we had had ice cream sundaes on the way to the baseball game so we didn't really need a whole lot for dinner so i'm just making my sandwich with two fried eggs yeah two whole fried <laughs> eggs on one sandwich and a slice of cheese i'm putting some mayo on each piece of toast and that is it. I just have my two sausage patties on the side and it hit the spot. Very easy, and very simple, and very filling. Dinner doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be something you like. Thank you. 
Yay, we made it to dinner number seven, which for us means it is Saturday. And I am just chopping up this broccoli. I'm cutting the big stems off and putting them in a freezer bag to throw into my freezer, where I will put other vegetable scraps to use for broth, for soup, and whatnot. And then on for the rest of the broccoli, I'm just chopping up the um, good ends uh, really nice and little. You don't have to have it really fine for this broccoli salad, but I like it to be um, really small. And I'm just kind of trimming all of the broccoli down and then putting any of the big stems in this freezer bag. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I have it all chopped up and ready to go into the salad. Oh, by the way, I'm making broccoli salad. Now that the broccoli is chopped up and ready to go, I'm going to start getting the dressing mixed up in my bowl. I'm putting in some mayo and I am just going to eyeball it. I do have a recipe that I will link in the description box for you, but I usually just take a recipe and just use it as reference and then do what I want with it. So next I'm adding some vinegar. You can use a red wine vinegar, you can use apple cider vinegar, any kind of vinegar really that you like or what you have. Have. red wine vinegar just happens to be what I had in my pantry I added about a half a bag of a small bag of real bacon pieces and about a half a cup of dried cranberries and I'm just gonna stir that all together and try to loosen up that mayo mixture and it looks like I'm gonna need just a little bit more of that vinegar to kind of thin it out I did give it a taste and yeah, I decided it just needed a little more zing, so some more vinegar going in. And then once I get that all mixed together and it's nice and smooth, I'm going to add a tablespoon of sugar, and that is what makes it really delicious. And so I'm gonna mix that in so it's not all gritty and it gets dissolved nicely in that dressing. And this dressing is just so, so good. It's so bacony and sweet and yummy. So anyway, just gonna stir that around and then I'm gonna add my broccoli and then mix that all in until that broccoli is nice and coated. Once I have my broccoli and my dressing mixture all combined, then I'm going to set that aside and get busy chopping up some pecans. And I'm just gonna toss those right in and give them a stir until it's all mixed together. And then the salad is going back into the fridge until later in the day when we have dinner. And it'll be so, um, so much better after it sits. Now I'm not sure if everyone's gonna like this or if they'll even try it because hey, it's broccoli. But if they don't, it won't hurt my feelings any because I happen to just love the salad and I wouldn't mind having to eat it all by myself. Next I'm getting my chicken thighs into this marinating bowl and I'm just going to pour one of the bottles of the teriyaki marinade sauce on top of it and then use my little marinade suction tool that came with this bowl and get this in the fridge to sit for a few hours until I'm ready to get it all cut up and put on skewers. Hey, 
Okay, now we've made it to the last dinner of the week. And for us, that means it's Saturday. And bear with me because I know not what I want to do. <laughs> so I've got these chicken thighs that I put in the fridge a little earlier to marinate. And they are marinating in this teriyaki marinade that I picked up at our local grocery store. I'm going to be skewering, skewering these uh, chicken thighs on these skewers and grilling them. I'm just not sure how I want to handle them yet. So if you ever like get started cooking and you just find yourself looking at it like, what am I doing with this stuff? <laughs> then don't worry, I do that too. <laughs> but we're gonna make this work, so. I want it to kind of be like, you know, like when you get um, chicken at the Chinese restaurants and it's on a skewer, like just kind of bunched up on there. So I want it to be like flattened as well. So I think I'm gonna put it in one of these baggies. I know you can put it between two pieces of like plastic wrap or whatever and pound it that way but I don't have a lot of uh, faith in myself not to make a big big huge mess and I'm going for a little mess today not big so I want to make sure that I have a little bit of an air pocket in my bag otherwise it'll just all explode <laughs> and so I'm going to take my rolling pin and just start lightly giving my chicken a pounding and get it flattened a little bit. Gonna have to be a little rougher than that, I guess. Oops. Hang on, everybody. We're all right. <clears throat> I like it, it's working. Am I still, whoops, feeling 100% confidence? That's a no, but it's gonna be okay either way. My family is pretty non-judgmental. As long as the food tastes good, they don't really care how it looks. And so, let's move this back over here. Get this guy back out. And I'm gonna pop him right back into this mixture here and let him chill for a minute. And then we'll work on this piece. All right, that's pretty awesome. And so I'm just gonna work on getting my chicken pounded into thinner pieces. And then I will be back to work on getting that onto the skewers and then we can see how that ends up. <laughs> because I really am going into this with no plan. <laughs> All right, it'll be fine. It's gonna be fine. Note to self and others, this part is messy and gross. Wear gloves or prep the meat ahead of time and then marinate in the marinade sauce before trying to put them on the skewers. But these teriyaki skewers did turn out delicious. I cooked them on the grill. They were a big hit with the guys. I did make some of the um, grillers on the side for those of us who didn't want to have the chicken skewers, which was mainly me. But we did have a kid over for a sleepover, so we had an extra mouth to feed on this night. We had some corn and some fried potatoes on the side as well as that broccoli salad and it was so delicious. And moving on to the dessert part of the video, I am making strawberry um, keto strawberry fluff. And to make this I am using a half a block of cream cheese softened, a whole tub of zero sugar Cool Whip, 
a package of strawberry flavored sugar-free jello and I just uh, sliced up as many strawberries as I thought looked like it would be delicious to us <laughs> and then I added some cottage cheese and mixed that all together and that was it for this and I served it with some graham crackers. That's all there is to this light summertime dessert, and that's going to wrap up this week's What's for Dinner. I thank you so much for stopping by, and if you had fun here today, please hit the subscribe button so you can see more of my future videos. Bye for now.